welcome back to the channel. If you've been following some of the work I've been doing lately, what we've been doing is getting custom assets outside of the Unreal Engine ecosystem, uh, bringing them in, particularly clothing assets, and then attaching them to a skeleton in the Unreal Engine system, uh, specifically in this case, the um, MetaHumans skeleton. So uh, I found this uh, cool looking jacket. Uh, it's in a couple of pieces here, but leather jacket with um, you know uh, a turtleneck attached. Looks pretty cool. Um, that's the asset that we're gonna target. We're gonna put that inside of Unreal Engine. I'll just show you that uh, we've got it working. Uh, we'll get it put on this MetaHuman. You can see um, it's attached. Um, it's also fully rigged and working. Um, so if you're interested in that, that's what we're going to get done. Uh, I had a previous tutorial um, where we took some custom Nikes and put that on a MetaHuman. So this is sort of an extension of, of the same process there. So we're going to be doing a lot of the same things. We're going to be using Blender. Um, and uh, yeah, just stick around and I'll, I'll show you how I did it. So let's start first with um, the actual asset. You are going to want to get this coat from CG Traders. The name of the coat is up here. It is free. I'll just back up here on the website. It is royalty free and a free download. Um, so go ahead and grab that. Uh, when you click on the link, it's going to take a couple of seconds for it to load up. You're going to want to get two files out of here. There's a whole bunch of different files in there. You can get the FBX, you can get the OBJ, um, a whole bunch. Of, I'm sure there's Maya files and other 3DS and um, other systems in there, but we're going to go and we're going to get the blender file and we're going to get the texture files. So go ahead and download those leather jacket, uh, blend.rar. And, uh, there's a texture file right here, just called textures. Go ahead and download that one. When those are downloaded, um, just go to where we downloaded them, right click. You should have this seven zip link and then just extract the files and then just pick the location, um, where you want to extract them. When that's done, uh, we're going to do a couple other things. In Bridge, in your uh, MetaHumans group, we are going to target this uh, Taro asset. This is the same asset that um, uh, came with the MetaHumans preview, the male asset. Um, but the difference is don't use that asset because it doesn't have a whole lot of the extra components that we're going to need to make this work. So make sure that you're grabbing this asset specifically. Um, if, uh, you know, you haven't already downloaded it, you'll need to press the little green, uh, arrow button here, and then you'll just use this export to export it into an unreal, uh, engine project. Not going to go through any of that. If you, if you want information on how to do all that, um, I'll put some links in the description below, uh, related to, to MetaHumans, but, um, I've covered that off in detail. So this, we're going to skip right ahead to the project. Um, the one where it's working, there's a couple of things, uh, concept wise that I want to share with you. In the MetaHumans project, so this is what will come over with um, Taro. Um, if you go into, um, actually, you know what? If you stay at the top of the folder structure, uh, MetaHumans folder structure, uh, structure, and you type in uh, preview, you're going to see all of these different uh, body type uh, skeletal mesh assets come up. And the way that these work is if you just look at them closely, um, they've got three components to it uh, before the preview. Uh, it's um, for the female, it's, it's denoted as F. Then the next um, three letters are medium, tall, or short. Um, so MED, SRT, or TAL. So that's just telling you how uh, tall the skeletal mesh is. And then the last one is OVW, which means overweight. Uh, NRW, which means normal weight, and um, underweight, UNW. So with those, you can tell, um, you can basically tell um, what each one of these skeletal meshes is going to look like if you click on it. Um, for our example today, we're just going to use one of these. We're going to use the medium normal weight. Um, but if you went through and you clicked on any of these assets, you'd be able to see um, the corresponding. This must be the underweight, um, underweight tall body type, right, for example. Um, cool. Okay. So one of the other things I'll say before moving on is this is one of the messages that the creators of, of MetaHumans are trying to um, share and, and get people to understand is that because there's 18 different meshes, because these are high fidelity and high quality assets, that's the reason that they haven't churned out a ton of clothes. There's a lot of work behind that. Uh, it's not that they're going not going to do it. It's just that there's a lot of work 
um, to be done in that space uh, because, and you'll see by the time we get through this, that in order to do, to create a clothing asset, you have to consider all of these 18 different properties, um, you know, including, you know, the gender, um, because how these clothes are going to fit on one skeleton versus another uh, is going to vary. Um, and so if you have to create one clothing asset, you have to reproduce that 18 times and you'll get a little taste of um, how that all works today. Okay, so with that being said, um, we're only gonna pick one of these. We're gonna pick the uh, medium normal weight body preview. We're gonna right click on that and we are going to asset actions and we're gonna export that. I've already exported it, so just go ahead and pick a location. The other thing that we're going to need is we're going to need the um, hoodie asset. So uh, Taro, in his body, I'm just going to delete this preview portion here. Um, sorry, if I go back to Taro, if I go to his BP, you can see I've already got this uh, added on here. But if we navigate to uh, the hoodie that comes across with him, should be this medium normal weight uh, hoodie. Um, we also want this skeletal mesh uh, as well. And the reason being is if I open it up, you can see that it has a skeleton attached to it. Um, and essentially what we're gonna do is I want something with a little bit of bulk. Um, I want something that's sized somewhat similarly to the jacket. And so I think the hoodie at this point is our best bet because I'm gonna take the way that this is sitting on this skeleton and I'm gonna transfer that over uh, into, our, um, into our jacket. Um, so that we also want to export this FBX. So just right click on that skeleton. Uh, whoops, what am I doing? Right click on that. Um, it should be asset actions. There we go. Um, export and then just uh, place that um, where you placed the uh, other FBX um, that we exported. Now we've got two things exported out of here. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is, uh, I think we're going to go head over to Blender. So you can see I've already got a project open here and, and working, but um, we're going to start new. So we're going to go uh, with Blender open. We're going to go File, Open. Uh, we're going to find the Jacket Blend file that we downloaded from CG Trader. We're going to pop that open, and this is what it's going to look like. Um, so just a, a couple of quick things, uh, just a reminder in Blender, uh, these controls are a little bit different. So your middle mouse wheel or your middle mouse button, if you hold that down, you can pan around. Um, and uh, you know what, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what controls I'm using as we're going, but that, that's going to be probably the one that you use the most. And then uh, the same as if, um, under the same uh, vein of thinking, if you hold the shift, the left shift button on your keyboard, and the middle mouse button, you can sort of pan up and down sideways or uh, uh, straight, uh, as opposed to holding the middle mouse, mouse, mouse button will sort of rotate around. And then if you hit shift, it'll just kind of keep you in uh, one plane and you can move around that way. Okay, so that's sort of your basic navigation. With this project open, we're gonna delete a little bit of this bloat here. We don't need the camera or the light. So we're gonna select that, hit delete, get rid of those. In this asset, you're actually going to find that you have, if I click up here on the right, you actually have uh, five different materials and five different meshes attached to this Blender file. Uh, for our purposes, we don't need the zipper and the jacket and the turtleneck to all be different files. Um, so we're going to join them together. Um, one thing to take note before we do that, um, in the bottom right here, there's this materials ball. With that ball selected, um, if you click through these different default materials, you'll actually see, or these different default meshes, um, you'll actually see that there's a material attached to each one. If we go ahead and click on the default, default, <laughs> default, default material, shift click, um, select all of them. If we hit control J, that's to join all of the meshes. You'll notice that if you still have this material ball selected, you'll notice that all the materials come along for the ride. So if you're familiar with Unreal Engine, um, and the setup for uh, character clothing or, or any sort of thing that uses materials, you'll see that sometimes they have multiple materials attached. This is that um, data that's coming across out of Blender or Maya that's telling the system what are the materials that's attached to the object and how many materials does Unreal Engine need to have assigned to a particular mesh. Um, okay, so with that understood, um, I am going to grab uh, select the coat here. I'm just going to hit G for grab Y. I'm pressing Y to keep it on the green on the Y plane. And I'm just going to slide this coat out of the way. 
Reason being is that this is sort of the origin here. Um, when we import our other assets, so file, import, they're gonna show up at that origin. So I just wanted to get that jacket out of the way. So import FBX, uh, you're gonna go and find where you imported um, the hoodie from. So M medium normal weight top hoodie should be your file. You're gonna to want to, on the right here, change this to minus X forward, Z up. And then in the armature, you're gonna to wanna to change the primary bone to X, the secondary bone to Y, and uh, you're gonna import that FBX. It should show up on the origin uh, as expected. Um, so that's one thing. Um, and then uh, the other thing that we're going to do is we are going to import that uh, mesh that we had talked about. So I'm just gonna find that. I believe, looking for M underscore, here it is, M underscore medium normal weight body preview. Same thing, manual orientation, minus X forward, Z up, armature, X, Y. Okay, import that, it should just go over top of uh, where you had the hoodie imported, and now you have everything in here. So essentially we want the hoodie, as I explained, to transfer the weight painting to our jacket and so how it fits on the current skeleton. We wanna transfer that to the jacket, that's why it's in here. We've also brought in the preview mesh so that um, what we'll do is we'll do a bunch of sort of looking at our existing model and make sure that the, um, the jacket that we're importing fits on top of that model and there isn't like Z fighting or there isn't parts of the mesh that are poking out um, from that model. Um, so that's why we've got both of, both of these things in here. Um, the other thing that came across uh, for us, if you uh, didn't on your export settings, here I'll just show you. If you happen to export the hoodie like this, um, asset actions, ugh. asset, actions, export. Um, if you did this, uh, we'll just pick anywhere, and you left the level of detail in here, so uh, you, can, you can take off the LODs, but if you left them on by chance, What's going to happen is you're going to get this funky looking um, sort of uh, uh, mesh here. And the reason being is with this selected, I can show you why that is. Um, we're just going to expand this window out. In this uh, top hoodie section, if we expand this underneath the root, um, you're going to see multiple meshes attached to that root. And if you take a look, take a look at the names LOD0 through LOD3. Uh, if we go and we turn these off by using this little icon on the right, um, we can actually turn off each of those hoodies. But if we turn them back on, you'll see that um, for each LOD, there's a different mesh. And so that's how LODs are working in between um, Blender and Unreal. Um, we actually don't need these other LODs. We're just gonna try and keep it simple today and we're just gonna deal with LOD zero. But the other thing that I'll show you is like, just so you know, um, in case you're looking in the future of creating additional LODs, is that if you select the LOD and you look down here, it'll tell you how many vertices, how many faces, and how many tries are associated to that object. So as expected, LOD0 is your highest quality asset. And you're gonna see, so if we have 38,000 vertices attached to LOD0, LOD3 is gonna have a lot less, right? 26,000, right? So one of the ways that um, you can go through and create lower quality assets is by reducing the amount of uh, vertices and faces um, and basically just, um, uh, basically the amount of mesh um, that's attached to this, to this object. Okay, long story short, uh, explain that. I'm just going to select LOD3 to LOD1 delete all of those, and we're just left with the uh, individual hoodie on its own. Okay, uh, with that all done, I am going to, uh, sorry, shrink the collection down. I'm going to put the window back here, and really what we want to do next is we want to get this jacket uh, situated over top of this human here. Um, so I'm going to select the jacket. I'm going to hit G. I'm going to hit Y to bring it back uh, over here. I'm going to hit S for scale or size. And then I'm going to shrink that down. Whoops, it didn't work for me. S, scale, shrink that down, left click. And then I'm G, Y, and I'm going to bring him back over here. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is there's this little flyout arrow um, right up here, if you can see my mouse. Uh, when your mouse is over top of it, it turns into a double barred arrow. If you click that, this sort of flyout window will open. In the items section, 
uh, there's a bunch of properties here. By default, it's going to show quaternion or quaternion or whatever the heck that is. Um, we want that that's affecting these sort of um, uh, the the numbers, the input values for rotation. We want these to be in degrees. It's just easier. Uh, I find it easier to work with. So if we move down um, and go to XYZ Euler, I assume that's how you pr pronounce that, it's just going to switch our items um, into degrees. And then what we can do is rather than um, all that we're trying to do is situate this mesh over top of the other one, we could do that by hand by grabbing this and moving it around, but um, we can just be more precise if we use the uh, degree section here. So I'm going to change X to 90 degrees and you can see what happens there. Uh, y should stay on zero, and then I think the Z is minus 90. Yeah, and then we just get that situated properly there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is drag it back here on the Y plane. Um, uh, G, Z, bring it back over top of our guy. And essentially at this point, and I've already done this manually a couple of times in the past to get it right, so I'll just show you kind of the concept, but basically what we're doing, depending on your asset, is we're just... Um, we're situating that over our mesh, we're pressing S to resize it, um, pressing G and Z and G and X to sort of just get this thing, whoops, get this thing into the position that we want so that it's sized correctly and um, sitting over top of our human in the right way. So rather than make you sit through and see how I'm clicking and, and sort of perfecting where I want that to sit. Um, you can play with that and do that yourself. I've got um, a previous project that has the settings that I used last time and they used they worked quite well. So rather than me muddling, uh, oh, there's a little meme for you. Uh, rather than me muddling with that in front of you, what I'll do is I'll just bring those settings up, we'll compare them, we'll plug them in here and then um, that'll get you along that much faster. Or, you know, you can stop the video and you can play around with the, the scale and, and the shape and the size, um, however you want to do that. Okay, so I'm just pulling that paint file up and we'll just do some comparison here and we'll just move these numbers over so that we just don't have to fiddle with it. Um, so the final numbers that I used here are 0 0.058 minus 0 0.058, we'll go with that. Um, zero and then zero minus 0 0.229 minus 0 0.229, okay. And da, 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 da. we've got 90, zero minus 90, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.003, 0 0.003, okay. Um, and let's just see here, 1.22, 0 0.781, just make sure I got that right, 1.22 and 0 0.781, 1 1.22 and 0 0.781, you can tell that the values are pretty close here, so I was already pretty close with the quick um, adjustments that we made, I was getting pretty close there, but might as well make it exact to... Uh, the version that we already have that worked. Okay, um, but just recognize um, recognize that there is a little bit of practice and skill um, needed to sort of get this coat lined up. Um, but let's just have a look at uh, those settings, what the, that's done for us. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's decent. Uh, I'm gonna do one thing at the top right here. I don't like working in this colored mode. So there's a couple of different modes you can go from, you know, you can see the actual um, uh, mesh, uh, you can see sort of the, the sculpting gray clay, and then you can have like a fully rendered view. Uh, I'm just going to go with the gray clay because that's what I sort of like working in in this mode. And we're just going to take a look at the mesh. And really what we're looking for is areas where this isn't quite fitting right. So in particular, um, you can see, and, and this is why we brought in this, this preview mesh, you can see that this part of the neck is actually fighting for space with this um, preview. If I, with the with the preview mesh selected, so this big head here, if I hit H, that's going to hide it. And you can see that the actual real mesh here is, um, uh, there, it's not 
it's not supposed to be cut off there, right? So if I hit Alt H to bring the head back, you can see where um, the current mesh and the jacket are, are fighting. And there's a couple of different areas where that's occurring. You can see that on the sides with the hoodie. Um, you know, the, the arms aren't lined up. But the biggest problem right now is there. And um, I find that this cloth is a little bit close to the face. So the next part of this is we're going to start adjusting the mesh a little bit in order to pull it away from the um, eventual metahuman's body that's going to be in this thing, right? So um, we'll just turn the mesh off, the uh, preview mesh off for now. The other thing is just in the top right, you, we've got the hoodie and we've got the preview mesh. I turned off the mesh itself, but the root bone is still on. So I'm just going to select that and hit H as well. So because there's two skeletons, there's actually two skeletons on top of each other. And I just, I didn't want that affecting sort of what we're going to do here. Okay, so um, if we're going to pull this portion away from the head, I'm going to go into modeling mode. I am going to select the, sorry, I'm going to go back to object mode. I'm going to select the ja jacket, and then I'm going to go back into edit mode. And that's just going to expose all of sort of the vertices. If I left click, on um, the object right now, it's gonna select individual vertices. So in the top left, you actually have a section where you can choose what type of object or what type of you know, um, uh, men mesh manipulation that you wanna use. So you can use the individual vertices, you can select by edges. For our purpose, I'm gonna select uh, faces, and that's just this last little button there. And then, um, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, select a bunch of these tries. Um, and you can do that by uh, shift clicking to add extra ones and control uh, clicking to remove the tries that you don't want. Um, once we have a couple of tries selected, if you just hit the decimal or the delete key on your number pad, what it's going to do is it's going to zoom in and it's going to focus on the area that you have selected so that you can middle mouse button and rotate around it. Uh, otherwise, it's very hard to sort of um, select the right objects and manipulate them the way that you want. So again, with just shift click, I'm going to uh, select a bunch of these vertices. And we're going to um, try and move this all together. That's selected. That's all selected. Sure, we'll grab those. We'll grab these. I think that's enough there. We'll make sure that we've grabbed the ones on the top. Just select these. And I think we've got a, enough of the portion. You know, maybe I'll go another row down here. I think we've got another, enough of the portion um, to pull away from the face here. So if I come up here, and then the next thing that we're going to want to do is that if I hit G and I move my mouse, you can see that it deforms the mesh but it does it in a really ugly way. So what we want to do is we want to select that and move it, but we want to move the, the mesh uh, together more el elegantly. So there's, there's this little option at the top of your screen called proportional editing. If I turn that on, and be careful not to touch anything when you turn that on, and then just um, zoom out, zoom out, and then, um, how do we do this? What's the best way of doing this? Proportional editing is on. Oh, yeah, zoom out, and then with that section still selected, hit G. And what's going to happen is that now with proportional editing on, you're going to get this circle that sort of envelops your, um, your project. If you move your mouse, you're going to see that it now affects a larger area. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to hit G, and then we want to... Oops. Uh, you can just hit escape if you, if you do something wrong. Uh, we want to hit G, and then we want to mouse wheel in to the section that we want to uh, target. So uh, I'm just going to do that and hit Escape. Then I'm going to mouse wheel in close to our object. And then um, now when I hit G, I'm sort of affecting all of these items. So it's still a little bit too big. I'm going to make our uh, circle a little bit smaller. And then uh, that's about right. So I'm just going to turn up here, hit G, and I'm just going to pull that away from the face and just have a look at what that looks like. Not bad. Um, and then I'm also going to go G, and I'm just going to pull it a little bit to the left as well. And I think that's going to fix our problem. Um, what we can do is we can go back into object mode. We can um, hit Alt-H to unhide everything. 
and we can see just how that's affected our character, right? So now we've got this nice, nice sized gap in between the edge of his collar and his face, whereas before the collar was right up on his face. And so we're going to do the same thing uh, at the back of the neck there and the same thing uh, at the sides of the body. Um, so I am going to speed up the video at this point. So I, I think you get the idea of what I'm doing and you can kind of follow along there and then that'll just speed up the video and we won't take a ton of time. Uh, a couple of things before I do that that I'll just point out. I'm not going to touch the hoodie because the hoodie isn't part of our final product. And another thing to be uh, to consider is that we brought in the hoodie asset and the hoodie asset has extra bones on the hood and extra bones on the ties of the hoodie. Um, technically, we should probably delete those out, but we're just we're we're, we're just going to ignore it because it's not going to affect our, our situation here. But if we want to go back and delete those bones out, we're not going to use them, so it's probably the right thing to do, and we could do that in Blender. But again, I'm just trying to keep trying to keep this condensed and get this working for you guys, um, and not make this super super long because uh, I have a tendency to do that. Okay. Um, the last thing I'll mention is I am going to pull out the sides of the jacket, um, but. If you notice that we've got both the hoodie mesh on and we've got the uh, body mesh on, if I click on the hoodie and I hide the hoodie, you can actually see that there isn't a ton of Z fighting um, with the actual mesh. There's a little bit here on the sides of the one leg here, um, but there isn't a ton that's actually with the actual skeleton and the hoodie we're actually going to throw away. Um, we're not going to use it in our final um, export. So you know, we don't necessarily have to cover up all of the hoodie problems, but I am going to pull this bottom out because um, if you think about a hoodie, it's got the tight elastic band at the bottom and that's sort of more snug to the body. Um, whereas, you know, the jacket is sort of a little bit more free flowing at the, at the bottom. So I do want to put a little bit more bulk there. Okay. So with all of that stuff explained, I'm just going to go ahead and make these changes and then uh, we'll fast forward that part and I'll come back and we'll, we'll see how we did. Cool. Okay. Um, I think that's done. Let's just go back into object mode, um, hit alt H to turn everything back on and just see how we did. Um, there's still a little bit there, but I think that's related to the hoodie. So if we hide the hoodie, yeah, that's looking pretty good. We're mostly concerned with the mesh. Oh no, we got a bunch of problems at the back of the neck here. You know, because it's fitting, um, sorry about showing you his taint here, um, but it's fitting decently everywhere else. Okay, let's just, uh, I'll go back and I'll pull um, on this section of the neck and just fix that quickly. I think that's good. Let's hide that again. Make sure we're hiding the root again. Um, and we're pretty good on that front. Um, so the next thing that we want to do with that all sort of fixed up is we want to pull the arms into place. Um, so what I'm going to show you is I'm just going to expand this window out a little bit again, is um, that underneath the, um, we want to use the hoodie. So underneath the hoodie, Underneath the root, there's this little pose icon here. And so there's two things that you can do. Um, just You may be familiar with this already. If I select the armature and I go into pose mode, I'm into pose mode with this, with this skeleton. And you'll notice, I, I don't know if you were paying attention, but if I turn that off, this little selection arrow shuts off as well. So why I wanted to point that out is that there's two ways to get into pose mode and that this section up in the top right can be a little bit confusing in, in, in Blender because all of these look like selectable objects. Not all of them are objects. In this case, if I select this piece here, that's actually just bringing us into pose mode. So you'll notice that the pose mode shift shifted when I selected that. 
So you could go to pose mode or you could select it up here and it'll just shift you over to pose mode. And then we'll open up this um, sort of skeleton tree and we'll keep opening it up until we get down to spine five. And then after spine five, we get to uh, the clavicle left and right, clavicle underscore L. And with that selected, if we hit the R for rotate, we can move the arm um, in that space. So what we want to do is we want to move this arm up by the clavicle and just position the wrist so it's sitting inside of uh, the jacket arm. And then uh, likewise on the other side, the right side, same thing. We're going to select it, we're going to hit R, and then we're just going to uh, position that wrist in the right spot in the jacket. Um, so I think we're good from you know this plane's perspective, um, but from the top down, we're still a little bit off. So I'm just going to get into position there and I'm going to go further down on the right side because that's what I've got selected here. And I'm going to move down the tree to the upper arm. And now we're selecting the bone up here and we're just going to hit R and we're going to rotate that into place now. Now this one, uh, I want to be specific because I'm really worried. Uh, I'm mostly concerned. I'm not worried. I'm, I'm concerned about the, where the elbow goes. So if I pull that back, um, and pull it forward, what I'm actually trying to do is I'm trying to position this elbow so it's just sitting inside uh, the jacket material there. And likewise, on the left side, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, we're going to expand the left clavicle, we're going to grab the left arm, we're going to hit R, and same thing, we just want to get that elbow positioned right inside, um, right inside the mesh there. Um, and I think we can do a little bit more work on the right side to get that right. Yeah, just right inside. Okay, so now the elbow is right um, at the, the touching the mesh of that coat. And then we want to drill down just a little bit further. So if we open up the upper right arm and we go to the uh, lower right arm and we hit R again for rotate, we actually want to then rotate the lower arm and we want to uh, position it so that the hand is basically in the center of the cuff. And we'll do that on both sides. Uh, clavicle left and right, upper arm, lower arm. So same thing, just get that hand right in the center of that cuff. Good. Okay, so we've mostly got our uh, skeleton positioned, um, but we still have a few issues. So one, namely, it looks like um, the skeleton is wearing, uh, it's a kid and it's wearing its dad's coat and the cuffs are over top of the hand. So we want to fix that. And we're going to use the same method that we used before um, to manipulate the mesh and fix that. So I'm just going to go back into object mode quickly. I'm going to select the jacket and then I'm going to go back into edit mode and we're in this section again. Um, I'm going to click on a triangle. I'm going to hit delete so that I can rotate around it. And just like before, uh, I'll speed this up, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to select, uh, you know, probably about four or five rows up on each cuff. I'm going to make sure that I get four or five rows on the inside, and I'm going to make sure that I select the edge of the cuff, and then I'm going to move the whole thing up the arm so that it just fits uh, more proportionally. So I'll speed that up, but um, I think you get the idea. turn the mesh back on again, Alt H. Um, and I think what we want to do too is just to be sure, I'm pretty happy with where those cuffs are, um, but just to be sure of everything. Um, sorry, I'm just hitting the, uh, I'm just hitting the uh, number keys on the number pad to sort of realign how I'm looking at this thing. Um, but I want to take the skeleton of the mesh and I want to line it up um, to everything here so that we can get a really good comparison and make sure that um, we're not uh, having any Z fighting against the uh, body preview. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, pose and just like before, we're going to go all the way down to the clavicles. Left. We're just going to 
line that up. Right. Just gonna line that up as best we can. This doesn't have to be perfect. Um, then on the upper arm, same as before, just line up that elbow nice. Do the lower arm. Try and line it up to the existing skeleton. Okay. Um, on the right, uh, we already did the clavicle, so just the upper arm. Make sure that's there. Then the lower arm. And uh, good enough. Okay, if I go back to object mode, if I select the hoodie, I hide the hoodie, I'm just really looking for areas where the mesh and the jacket might have some Z fighting. So right here, um, the position of this hand is not so great, but it, it's not quite lined up with our existing one. So I think if we uh, fix that from a clavicle perspective, let's just do that, go back into uh, pose that is the right clavicle we'll just bring that up a little bit just to make sure that um, we're not having any sort of z fighting with the mesh i think that's pretty good um, there's definitely some going on there uh, which isn't great some there that we'll need to fix um, and the skeleton is pretty li well lined up so yeah we'll need to fix that and that um, I'm just trying to think if there's a better solution there because this guy's lined up really well. Um, I just don't want him, you know, I don't want to make the jacket uneven. So I don't mind pulling it up here and here. But here, if I pull it out, that just doesn't seem like potentially the right solution. Um, so left arm, upper arm, if I brought that back to where it needs to be, it actually should be, you know, probably there and the lower arm would need to be there, but then the, the cuff is way off. So maybe if I just go and grab that cuff again and uh, bring this other skeleton in to match, that that's a better place to go. So we'll do that on the hoodie too before we forget in pose mode um, on the left side. We did the upper arm. Whoops, what am I doing here? Pose mode. Uh, here, upper arm. And we need to swing that. We should turn the hoodie on just to be sure. Object, Alt H, turn that hoodie on. Cool. Um, then we want to go back into uh, hoodie. Pose mode, upper arm, bring that way out here, match it with the other skeleton, okay, fine, um, and then I just, I think it needs to go there, and then we'll move the lower arm to match, yeah, there we go, and now we can just grab that, um, uh, we can grab that cuff again and um, pull that over. So let's do that. So we can move into the uh, next part uh, of our project here. Um, and so we don't need this preview mesh anymore. So I'm just going to select it and hit delete. Um, and that's all gone. I'm going to go up into the file folder here and delete the preview as well. And now we've just got our hoodie and our jacket mesh. Um, I'm going to hit Alt H to turn the hoodie back on. Um, that's great. Oh, this. Um, armature from the original preview is still there. So I'm just going to select that and delete. And then, um, yeah, we're set up for the next part um, and we should be able to uh, basically weight transfer.
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our jacket. We're going to add a modifier with this little wrench and we're going to add an armature. We're going to pick the object as the root. And essentially what we've done is we've hooked this, um, this um, jacket up with the root object of our uh, hoodie. So now those are, are, are joined. The other thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to left click on this default material and start dragging it with our left mouse button. And then when you get that sort of ghost um, text above it, just hit your shift, uh, your left shift key and drag it underneath the uh, root here. And what that should have done is, oh, uh, nope, that uh, that put a ghost under there. It should have parented it to the hoodie, but I, I just realized we have to do one more step. Left click this and drag it under our collection first so that they're in the same collection. And then left click, click the default material. Once it has that ghost text, hit the shift L uh, or the left shift and then under uh, the root, um, we're going to drop it in there and that's what happens. So you should have that final result of those two should sort of be next to each other, um, parented appropriately. Okay. With that done, we've come a long way. So we should really save, um, and we should have done this a couple of times throughout is just save different copies of your mesh. So you have, um, places and time as you go through this, cause this is really easy to sort of screw up if you don't do it exactly, uh, the way that the blender likes. So I'm just going to put um, demo uh, version one here, uh, just so that I know that's the latest and greatest. And we're going to save that. And then we're going to, in the top right, we're going to select our original hoodie. We're going to shift uh, left click all the way up to the root. And now that's selected everything in this tree and everything in our um, uh, viewfinder is now selected. The problem is, is that the way that this works is anything in dark orange is sort of like the child object and the um, anything in the, this sort of lighter orange is, is the main object. So in our case, we want the weight painting to transfer to the jacket. So we want the jacket to be in light orange. So if I hit control, left control, and then left click the default material, it will now make the um, jacket the primary object. From here, uh, I'm going to show you something and then we're going to back out. So you don't have to follow along to this part. I just want to show you an issue that we're going to have to work around. So if we go down to weight paint, you'll see right away the coat goes blue because it's getting some uh, paint attached to it. Um, the next step in the weight paint process is to go up to weights here and then hit transfer weights. And again, you'll see that that had an impact because we start seeing some color there. Um, but the next step here is to switch this source layers to switch it to by name. And when we do that, you'll notice that our jacket jumps away from the actual uh, parent uh, skeleton. And we don't want that. We want our jacket to be associated uh, right next to our skeleton. So I'm just going to control Z out of there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the hoodie. Uh, I'm going to go into pose mode, um, pose mode, pose mode, hoodie pose mode. Yep. Um, and I'm just going to go up to here in pose and I'm going to hit apply pose as rest pose. Um, and actually before I, I do that, I, maybe I'll demonstrate why I'm doing this. So if we just select the hoodie again and we click this, uh, in the bottom right here, if you see this little action icon, that's basically our pose icon. If you go in here and, um, you see that the root armature is selected, if you switch it to rest position, it actually defaults back to where we had it before we posed it. So what we want to do is we want to change this rest position to match the pose position. That's what we're doing here. So if I go back and I um, select the hoodie in pose mode and I go pose and then apply pose as rest pose, um, you'll see that now the armature's um, rest pose is up here with the jacket. Now we've we separated the skeleton from the hoodie, but that's okay because we're at the end of the day, we're going to delete the hoodie anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, okay. So with that done, uh, we'll just repeat a couple of the steps that we made here. We'll close out of this pose mode. We'll go back to object mode. We'll select the hoodie. We'll shift uh, left click root. Then we'll control left click the default material. And now we've got, um, we're back to this stage where we want to um, add the weight paint. So under object mode, if we go down to weight paint, if we go up to weights, and we go transfer weights, we'll see that that um, was applied. And then we've already switched the source layer to by name. Um, so that should have come over fine. 
So if we click out of there and we go to our default material, which is our jacket, and we open that up and we go to vertex groups, and then we click on uh, the individual vertices in our coat, we'll see that um, all of the weight paint, uh, weight paint has been transferred. So um, that's all done, and we can actually now delete the hoodie. We have no more use for the hoodie. Now our um, skeleton is parented to our coat, um, and we're good to go. If you want to test out that that's working, um, you can go down to, let's just say the clavicle, you can press R and you can see that um, the jacket is swinging around there. Um, so there's a couple more things that we need to do in Blender, but I want to sort of demonstrate um, a couple of things first. So we're going to export this asset. So if you want to go ahead and save it again, um, we'll call this version two. I have a bad habit of putting um, <laughs> final on these and then I go back and it's never the final version and I have to tweak it like eight times and then I have like final version one, two, three, four, five. So don't put final in your project, it's never final. Okay, um, so that was saved. We're gonna export this file, export FBX. We're gonna call this uh, jacket, sure, new demo version two, sure, why not? Um, we'll click armature and mesh on the right side here. We will want to make sure that our forward is minus X, our up is Z. Uh, under the armature section, we want to hit this to X and Y axis, and we want to make sure that we get rid of those leaf bones, and then um, we can export this. Boom. Done. Okay. Uh, if we go to Unreal now, and we go and we find that exported FBX, uh, wherever the heck we put that. I've got a ton of versions here because I've obviously worked through this a number of times. Um, I've created a little folder here called jacket. So I'm just going to create a new one here for us and I'll call it jacket demo. You can create a folder wherever you like. Um, and then I'm going to drag in that, uh, FBX that we just created jacket, new demo version two. Uh, we won't select a skeleton. We'll just let it build its own skeleton. You'll want to make sure that in the import rotation that you put minus 90 degrees. Um, in your case, you can create the materials. Um, you know what? I'll, I'll create them too so we can walk through that process. And then we'll just hit import all. Cool. Now we've got our jacket in here. So um, because I was just talking about the materials and we've got some shaders compiling and whatnot, we'll kill some time by creating a... Um, materials folder how do we rename this Ma jacket materials cool um you're gonna go and find where you put the materials for your um jacket i put mine in jacket textures i think there we go and we're just gonna shift select all of those and then just drag them into our project Boom, 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 boom. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to close out all these extra windows that I don't need. Cool. Okay. So for each one of these, um, you're going to have three materials. See, so for the belt, you've got the albedo, the metallic and roughness, and then the normal. And you're going to have one of those for each one of those five materials that we saw inside of Blender. Um, so if we go back to our jacket, jacket demo, you'll also see that there's five materials here. So we want to open up each one of those. Cool. Okay, with those open, we're then going to select each one of these sets of three and drag them to their corresponding material, drop it in. Cool. Okay, and then we're going to want to hook these um, textures up to uh, the material. So uh, you can take a look down here um, and it'll tell you uh, what this is. This is the base color, so obviously it's going to the base color. Any of these ones that are in blue are obviously always the normal. And then this other one, um, it's actually both the metallic and the roughness. They stuck it into one texture file. So if you uh, drag these to both the roughness and the texture and then hit apply and save, um, then that'll apply to your material correctly. So I'll just speed this up and I'll just do each uh, material and you can do the same.
Cool. So we've hooked all those materials up. I'm just going to go back to the materials and we'll just create material instances for each one of them. Um, I'm going to put something uh, easily identifiable so I can find this later. Into the jacket, I'm going to change each one of these out to their material instance version. Whoops, that was the belt. We don't want that. We want the Mina or whatever. Uh, where is it? Jacket? Okay. No, this should be the Mina. I think I named that incorrectly. Uh, what is this currently named? Oh, Tari. Ah, that's why I couldn't find it. Tar O. Cool. Go back to the jacket here. Um, this one is Jacket Taro. And this one is Mina. There we go. And this one is that one. Cool. Um, we'll save it, and there we go. That's what our jacket looks like. Pretty cool. Um, okay, so here's a couple of things that I want to show you. Yeah, so I want to go and we want to take our uh, MetaHuman uh, Taro. We want to take his blueprint. We want to drag him into the scene. Just delete this because we'll use that later. Cool. Okay. So with this guy in here, what we can do is we can select him. We can go into his BP. We can go into his viewport. We can select his top here. And um, we can select uh, this jacket new demo version 2 or whatever you called yours. And when we put it on the guy, it's just going to fit and be nice. Hmm, there's a little bit of jankiness here that I don't love based on us shifting the, the cuffs. So there's an area that we can fix um, maybe later. I mean, maybe that looks okay. It just seems a little bit off, like we need to pull this cuff down a little bit. You saw me playing with that, and so that's probably an area where we can fix that. Um, but otherwise, it's on there pretty well, um, and uh, it looks pretty good. Um, if we go back to the content browser, if, say, we stuck in an animation level sequence, we drag that into our scene. Um, in the details panel, if we opened the level sequence with it selected here, if we dragged in our BP Taro and uh, we clicked on the control rig, you're going to see that um, it works pretty well. Just like that. You can see it's moving pretty well. There is a problem though, and this is why I kind of wanted to show you this part before we fixed it, is that if I rotate um, this up, oops, I missed the uh, grab there. If I rotate this up, that's okay there. But if I pull it this way, you'll see the jacket sort of bends in an ugly way there. And we get this sort of, um, we get that pull on the mesh that doesn't really look right. And if I do the same thing here, whoops, um, and rotate that up, yeah, you'll see this is all ripping at the mesh in the wrong way. So uh, I wanted to demonstrate that before I fixed it here for you. We'll just hit Control Z, Z, Z. Um, and what we'll actually do is we'll go back into Blender. And this is where we can um, fix up some of the, the weight painting. So we could go and, and reselect the sleeve and pull it down. And, and we should have actually been able to see that before we moved out of here. But you can see that however I manipulated that, uh, I didn't do the best job. Um, and so that could be fixed up. Um, but the one thing that we want to do is we want to fix the, the weight painting. Okay, so um, let's do this. Let's fix the weight painting. So <clears throat> with the object selected, um, we're going to open up the default material in the top right there. We are going to go to weight paint, and then we're just going to cycle through. Whoops. We're just going to cycle through um, some of the weight painting here. And uh, specifically, I'm looking for 
when um, this weight painting falls under the arm. There we go. So here's where we have some of the problems. I don't think we have really a problem with the spine. This, this particular one is connected to spine four. I don't think that's really an issue. Um, the lat is probably okay, but um, it's when we get into this sort of stuff in the upper arm that we're having a problem. Let's see, there's nothing really there in the, well, there's a small, there's a small pull in the bicep. You can see that there. I think we can clean out some of that. So just thing, one thing to be aware of is this circle here is, is a brush and you can sort of paint on the mesh. Um, and then the weight is really kind of like the size um, and, you know, uh, weight of the brush. The strength is, you know, the strength of the color that you're going to uh, paint on. So in this case, we're in add um, up in this little world symbol. Um, we want to go to subtract and we just want to click under the arm there where we saw it was getting pulled unnecessarily. Okay, and we fix that. Uh, we'll do that. Um, can we do that on both sides? We'll just do it on the left side for now and then when we get to the right side, we'll look at it. Here again, tricep. Um, we can erase some of that that's getting pulled underneath the arm. Um, back, maybe just a little punch there. Forward is fine. Um, what do we got here? That seems fine. Upper arm, fine. Clavicle, there's nothing there. That seems all okay. Maybe, well, maybe if we just erase a little bit there. Oh, there's some. Uh, that one's probably okay. Spine four again. Oh, here's this hood. I mean, we don't really have the hood joint. So like I said before, we should actually go and delete those bones. I'm not going to do that in this video, but I'm going to cool that down a little bit there. Um, that seems okay. Okay, start at the top again and see um, what we can work through on the right side. Oh, this is actually a good point. The, the pelvis is really hot close to the bottom. And this goes again down to that, you know, on most hoodies, you have that sort of elastic type band near the bottom of the hoodie, which really ties to the hips. But when we had our character walking around, um, uh, oh, actually, I don't have it set. Oh, I do have it set up here. When we have our character walking around, uh, I've done some editing there, but you can see that like the jacket really kind of swings with the hips. It's almost too much. And then same here, like just his butt's kind of wagging with the jacket. I think some of that's okay, but it just seems a little bit unnatural. So I really want to, um, that's probably a little too strong. Whoops. Where did we go? Hit some wrong buttons there. Yeah, that's probably too strong to take that down. So let's just take the strength way down. And yeah, we just kind of want to cool this down a bit, uh, especially at the top. I don't mind it swinging from the sides. Here where we saw it really attached to his butt, we kind of want to cool that down a bit. Um, and you can play with this. I'm not going to do this perfect. Uh, I haven't played with it enough. I just know that, you know, probably the edge, I'm just trying to think logically. Probably the edge, it makes more sense, but uh, you know what, like a little bit of attachment there is probably okay, but let's just kind of go with something like that. Um, that just feels a lot better, I think. Um, and we'll see how it, how it plays out. Um, uh, spine is probably okay. I mean, again, we could kind of cool it down a little bit. You know, again, in the, the front a little bit, just kind of cool it down, how much it's affected. Same thing, a little bit across there. That's kind of, um, that stuff all seems okay. Maybe here, it just seems a little strong. Um, cool it down. Neck seems okay, head, clavicle. Lower arm is great. 
here I'm just looking on the left side to do what we did on the right side there just really looking for this upper arm twist core that's a problem and just paint that right out a couple of clicks there same thing just paint that right out we don't need that affecting that part of the jacket um, upper arm there is okay Um, so I think that's pretty good. Uh, we'll just save this as version 3 and I'll just show you how that uh, affects everything as we import it and export it. So export FBX, same settings, minus X, Z, armature, no leaf bones, XY, we're good. Export. In this case, um, we can use the same skeleton that we used last time. Whoops. Uh, and so that is going to be called uh, this new demo version 2 in our case uh, or whatever yours was we don't want to create the materials because we did that last time and then let's just import everything cool um, we'll control s to save those and then if we now go to our uh, BP here and we swap this out um, boom compile save let's just see what that painting's done yeah it's not perfect yet but you can see um, you can see where it's pulling is instantly uh, improved right like there's a little bit of deformation there and so we could play with that a little bit more but there's also an extent of you know uh, for a jacket, oh man, did I really mess up this guy's arm? For a jacket, um, you know, there's only so so much give that you can have in real life to put your arm up. There is going to be some some stoppage there. So, are you really going to be putting your arm up that high? Um, but you know, depending on your use case, um, you know, you can play around with that. That seems reasonable to get your arm that high before it's you know pulling on the jacket. Uh, in a in a weird way and so that seems pretty good I'm pretty happy with that um, the other thing and we won't cover it in this video but I'll just I'll just show you quickly is you can put it on the third person character I've got lots of tutorials on how to do that I'll link um, the main metahumans one um, in the link below but I've already got a, a guy set up on the third uh, person um, uh, on the third third person blueprint template and if we just actually took our version three jacket there that we've made, put it on this guy, you'll see um, that it works quite well on him as well. Um, we really do need to fix up that arm, but otherwise, oh, there's some uh, there's some mesh distortion there at the back. Maybe we got to pull the jacket out a little bit. Still moving quite a bit. I mean, I changed the weight paint, but um, still moving quite a bit. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good there. I think, you know, if we wanted to fix where the meshes um, are colliding out the back, so you've got that little pocket hole, I'd probably just go in and pull the jacket out in the back there. Um, just maybe right here. Um, if we went back to object and edit mode, we could, um, you know, we could take a pull on some of those um, uh, how we did before I mean obviously we use the proportion proportional editor we would hit G um, you know we'd want to affect a larger area we'd want to turn out this way likely yeah we just kind of pull that out some um, and then it would stop interacting with the with the butt we could also play around with some of the weight painting uh, maybe that was supporting uh, that place too I don't like this part of it, the whole the whole um, <laughs> promotion part. But you know, if you are enjoying this material, please like and subscribe. I am trying to grow the community and grow the channel a little bit and sort of develop something here. So if you are liking the content, please like and subscribe. Um, be active in the comments. If there's better ways to do things in Blender, if you're a Blender expert and you've got ways to avoid 
some of these challenges. Uh, I am active in the comments and I try and update anything that I've done wrong in uh, upcoming videos and pinned comments um, that are useful to other users that are digesting this. If you've got other ideas of problems that you want to solve, my whole thing is I'm learning all of this and then as I learn something cool, I just take it back to the channel and share it with you guys. So um, keep being active in the comments and that'll drive some of the content that's coming out. Um, but other than that, I, I think I'll, I'll probably play with some LODs. I'll probably play with some pants, things like that, and I'll bring that back to the channel. Um, there's some really cool things that you can do in Mixer with all of this. So you can actually take these assets into Mixer and then um, create some different looks um, for these assets. And then you've got now you've got multiple uh, versions of like the same jacket, but they look entirely different. And so now you've uh, created multiple different assets um, for your videos and for your games. So I'll, I'll have an upcoming video on, on that and how we can uh, add Mixer into the mix of all of this. Um, and then I've got other, a few other cool ideas uh, on the docket that'll be uh, upcoming and I'll keep you guys posted on it. So stay tuned to the channel and I appreciate appreciate you guys and I hope you appreciate um, the work I'm putting in here and uh, see you next time.